Hey guys, I'm Andre. I'm Elton. I'm Tristan. And this is ATV. We're gonna be reacting to another death battle. Oh yeah. It's gonna be Optimus Prime versus a Gundam. Ooh. I've never watched. I know quite a bit of some Gundams. I've never watched the series though. I know Transformers, yeah. but Transformers I know more well. I've watched I've... Gundam too, but I was very little. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then after that, I didn't get into it. So. There's yeah. so many different ones, and they're all tons of them are in different universes and stuff. Yeah. Some of them are in the same. Yeah, pretty much so. Uh, pretty much, I just, we, I personally know a lot more about Optimus Prime than anything else. Yeah. So, Autobots. Does it say what type, which Gundam is it? Is it just the, uh, what was the, what's the original Gundam? The Not Ray the original, Ray, but like, Ray, I yeah. I oh, what game I, oh, I never mind, that was the, that's something else. But yeah, I guess. We'll get into it, we'll learn yeah. more yeah, exactly. about it. Yep. And so, I'm wondering, and like I said, I wonder which one they're gonna use. Well, they're gonna use that one, that popular form of Gundam mm -hmm. that most yeah. people, that the most people recognize. Yeah. yeah. So I guess let's just get into it and see what uh, Gundams and Transformers are gonna do. Mm -hmm. one, Check out 23andMe, a DNA testing service that can offer insight into your ancestry, health, wellness, and traits. You want to find out your ancestry? Service I don't want to share too much. What? Your weight, so yeah, they never thought, thought about me. I was not more. Okay. It's super easy to do. Pay us for it. There's like a conspiracy theory that the government kind of put this in there. Or your 23andMe health and ancestry service kit at 23andMe.com. That's the number 23. So they can, so they have a whole register. Across of this vast world of different nations with different people, it is the clash of opinions which truly divides us. No, However, there is one universal truth which absolutely everyone can agree on. Giant robots are freaking oh awesome! <laughs> like Optimus Prime, the original G1 Transformer. And the RX-78-2, the original Mobile Suit Gundam. These aren't just any robots, right. they're the old school classics. The first of their kind, and we're in for a robo-battle of East versus West. Well, Optimus was originally Japanese, Japanese but he's whiz and I'm boomstick. boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, robot. armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. 3D animation. Millions of years ago, on a distant planet so called good. Cybertron, a great unrest grew between yeah. two factions of robotic beings, the Decepticons and, and the Autobots. Autobots. With little warning, they found themselves entangled in civil war. Led by that douchebag Megatron, the Decepticons started gunning down any bot they pleased for basically no reason, including some guy named Orion Pax, which will be important later. Rest in peace, Robo. What Megatron didn't know was that this seemingly random encounter would end up reshaping the universe. Thanks to a robot Gandalf, Orion Pax was rebuilt into something bigger, stronger, and way more recognizable. The newest commander of the Autobots had risen, Optimus Prime. The Autobots will never be sacrificed for them. He's much stronger Optimus now. Is a powerful That's from uh, with tons War of, of awesome Robo powers. As a Transformer, he can scan nearby like, objects and warp his body to resemble one, times. becoming a robot oh in disguise. God. This is like this up to dancing. Classic 1979 Kenworth K100 tractor. An oldie but a goodie who sports 500 horsepower and can book it over 80 miles per hour. He even gets a trailer which, when he doesn't need it, mysteriously disappears in the Why are going to be a truck mode? No, you know? really, where the hell does that thing go? I need to know. More importantly, the life force of every Transformer resides in their spark, sort of like a salt. And Optimus is no different, except that his spark gives him a few unique abilities. Yeah, his spark's pretty rare. Compared to other Robo people, it gives him increased strength, speed, and durability. He can shoot laser beams from his hands, fly with either a jetpack or his feet boosters, and move his limbs around while they're detached like some sort of ghost robot Rayman. Ooh. Ooh, Optimus is referred to as a point one percenter. That is how rare a being of his caliber is. Is that what all those people on Wall Street were protesting? Even then, <laughs> many of Optimus' abilities are further enhanced thanks to his possession of one of the most powerful artifacts in Cybertron's history. The Matrix of Leadership. 
Oh, yeah, you know, it's, I mean, it's nothing much. It's just a piece of robot gun! The Matrix is a conduit for the power of Primus, the creator of the Transformer race. With this, Optimus can heal some of his most grievous wounds. What? Not all the time. Like, you know, when he died. And use the power of the Matrix to light our darkest hour. Well, he has an impressive arsenal to hopefully keep that particular problem from coming up again. <laughs> yeah, never again. Regardless, he wields the Ion Blaster, a giant death cannon which prime one hands like a boss. This big ol' rifle fires bolts of energy strong enough to take down most Decepticons, and can even be fired into space from ground level. Even better, it never seems to run out of ammo. Ah, one can only dream. Optimus Prime also Asian carries man. numerous weapons that <laughs> are the energon. A raw yeah, energy sure. force used by Transformers yeah, to power their technology and, well, themselves. He's got the a glowy Energon axe and Energon swords, perfect for slicing up robots of all sizes. And I guess they probably work pretty good on people, too. Fighting fire with fire, Optimus Prime led the fight against the Decepticons for several millennia. Eventually, the he war even found its way to our own Earth. But we've got nothing to worry about with Optimus protecting the planet. He's tank blasts that would tear other bots apart. Like when this mega refinery exploded, it can be seen from outer space. He's punched the ground so hard, the trees around him freaking exploded. Child's play, Boomstick. He's strong enough to tip this large oil tanker, which, when compared to the real-life Seawise giant, must weigh over 700,000 tons. He's tossed a satellite into orbit and punched like, hard enough to crack like six shots just like who boasted thing. that his armor was drawn from the compacted subatomic matter of a collapsed star. Just to let you know, such a star would have a density of over 300 oh billion tons per cubic inch. While great density doesn't necessarily beget great toughness, this still means Six Shot's armor was 500 billion times more dense than osmium, the most dense natural material on Earth. You're the most dense natural material <laughs> on Earth. What'd you say? And our Robo Commander oh. wrecked it. He's fast enough Got to it. catch up to this Got Decepticon it. space shuttle in just 23 seconds. Given the size of the Earth here and the angle of ascent, we can determine he's moving around 125,000 miles per hour. He's also a talented leader, capable of commanding a thousand battles at the same time via the Omniglo. Like Skynet, but in a giant disco ball. He's used that crazy strength of his to punch through Megatron, who once tanked an explosion big enough to knock Cybertron out of orbit. And thanks to the weird robo-magic of the Matrix, he's even defeated Unicorn. Unicron. Who's basically a giant robot Satan who eats planets. This guy is unstoppable. Not necessarily. Optimus is certainly powerful, but after all is said and done, he has one major weakness. To violate that law would destroy our honor. He's just too nice. Yeah, he's kind of all about the whole honor and fair fighting thing, which kind of screwed him over more than once, and even got him killed multiple times. Plus, he killed himself once just because he accidentally broke the rules in a freaking game. Damn. But when his what? back is to the wall <laughs> and all hell's breaking loose, he'll fight to the end, riding the eye of the storm. I don't want to see a gun, though. One shall stand, one yeah. shall fall. In the year 2179, humanity has embraced the stars. Hundred years. Well, mostly. Right. After a somewhat united humanity expanded across the solar system, the ideologies between those on Earth and those in space began to drift apart. A new space noid republic, the Principality of Xeon, arose to challenge the Earth Federation. Space noid? That like the Domino's pizza mascot, but in space? No. Avoid the noid. Space Nazis. <laughs> started a war by gassing a populated space colony and dropping the whole thing on the planet. Man, that's messed up. But that's just how it started. For the real star of the show, some smart guys put their heads together and came up with the coolest thing they could think of. Giant fighting robots! These were mobile suits, and one of Earth's nuttier engineers had developed a suit which would put all others to shame. This was the RX-78-2, otherwise known as the Gundam. 
There have been lots of mobile suits named Gundam, but this was the, the original, original granddaddy of them all. This experimental mobile suit was hidden on a remote colony, but before its maiden voyage with the equally classified white base could begin, it was caught in a surprise Xeon attack. With just two Zaku suits, the Space Nazis wiped out almost all of the White Base's military crew. The only people left to save these secret projects were civilians, who had no idea these things even existed. Among those who rose up was a young boy named Amuro Ray. Brilliant, albeit standoffish, Amuro was actually the son of the Gundam's chief engineer, and had already stumbled upon the mech's coded blueprints. So he grabbed the owner's manual, jumped in the Gundam, and flew into the fight. Damn! Not too shabby for going off just the manual! Amuro quickly adapted to his complex controls thanks to its learning computer system, designed so the Gundam itself can learn its pilot's limitations and compensate. Its body is made of a super durable Luna Titanium alloy called Gundarium. Of course, yet another fictional metal that's way better than anything in real life. For weapons, it's got twin 60mm Vulcan guns for ears. It's got a shield that can block shots strong enough to take down warships, and a gravity hammer, a supersized flail that's rocket propelled. Whoever came up with that oh, is my goddamn awesome hero. Propel. Same with the guy who built the <laughs> ultra destructive beam up. rifle. Right, that would be the good. ingenious Dr. Minofsky. Thanks to him, the beam rifle is a marvelous feat of weapons engineering. Minofsky had developed a way to miniaturize the enormous megaparticle cannons found on warships without losing any power. The result is a Gundam-sized rifle that can take down entire fleets of ships all on its own. It's like having a pistol with all the power of a thousand tanks. A single shot could easily tear through a 13,000-ton Musai-class warship. Given the official stats of this ship, to tear it asunder like so would require a strike worth nearly 9,000 tons of TNT. Sure, the beam rifle only has 16 shots, but who really cares when you just need one? Last but not least, the Gundam carries two retractable beam sabers. Cause you can't have space battles without royalty-free lightsabers. But all these amazing weapons would be useless without an exceptional pilot. Despite still technically being a civilian, Amro became the main pilot for the Gundam. Turns out, his skill was mostly thanks to his previously unknown abilities. Amro was a new type. Like, uh, Pokemon? See, apparently humankind was never meant to live under gravity's pull. In space, without it literally weighing down their souls, some humans develop psychic powers. Oh. That is the dumbest backstory for why someone gets powers. And we've heard a lot of them. We got psychic powers. So what, he can like read minds or something? Sort of. These powers and their capabilities have little definition, often deferring between different people. Most new types can instantly understand each other upon contact, even drawing kinship between sworn enemies. Amro's abilities in particular grant him something akin to precognition. He can predict exactly what will happen on the battlefield and where his enemies I mean, will that's be, a big and plus. can capitalize on it if he reacts yeah, fast. Yeah, it's pretty big. Yeah, it's like yeah, observation. Or ultra instinct. <laughs> too fast for the eye to see, and navigated his friends through a collapsing <laughs> fortress with no casualties. By the end of the war, his own reflexes were pushing 4, 000, the limits of the Gundam itself. A magnetic coating was added to the Gundam to compensate reducing the suit's friction and increasing its speed by 27%. Over 14 years of military service, Amuro became a legendary pilot. He even learned how to use these super-fast funnel guns with his psycho was of powers. Speaking of speed, the Gundam is comparable to the Red Zaku piloted by Amuro's rival, Shar, which is three times faster than the standard green model. During the first large-scale battle with mobile suits, a Zaku flew through the battlefield in seven seconds. By comparing the 1,072-foot-long Magellan-class starships in the distance, we can tell the Zaku flew over 7 miles. This puts the standard Zaku's top speed just under Mach 5. When tripled to compare to Char, this means the Gundam can move at least 11,000 miles per hour, 15 times the speed of sound. Highballing it with Amuro's new type powers and magnetic coating, it's possible the Gundam can move as fast as Mach 25. Though anything over that would put it dangerously close to re-entry speeds, which its chassis cannot survive on its own. The Gundam is strong enough to lift and throw this 
goofy mobile suit and thumb it up to power through a magnetic field that's 7,200 degrees Fahrenheit. It survived plenty of really big explosions, including a detonating asteroid and a nuclear blast which wrecked Amaro's home colony. I bet it could wipe out the space Nazis all on its own. It nearly did. Amaro and his Gundam were instrumental to the war effort. It doesn't matter how much the Gundam was burned, it would always stand up, dispel the fear, and fly. Oh man, that sort of looks kind of cool. To me, it seems like technique-wise and speed-wise, yeah. it's better, but when it comes All to right, power, the power, are set. power in general, this debate, power and durability, for all. I think. But first, let me transform your eating habits. Like, take that you've probably heard of Bully Ray kind of the leading meal kit yeah. delivery it's service kind of in like the U.S. What did you know? You know? So, I don't know, man. I don't know either. It's like, I'll just find something like he has the power and durability. And he has uh, experience. And then... I think I know who I'm going to go with. Who are you going with? Uh, I'm going to go with Optimus Prime, just because... I'm going with Optimus too. Just because I, th I think that... Anyway. Just to make it different. I don't, I don't know technically who's win, but just to be, just not to have all of us in the same, I'm going to go with the gun of them. Yeah, okay. I don't know, I just, I think that Optimus might have, like, like you said, the power and, like, the just their ability. ability. Yeah. And just the speed, though. Like, I mean, they're both fast. And the, just... I, I don't know if I could say Optimus experience, because I guess he has experience too, but... Optimus, well, Optimus Prime has a millennium. Yeah. Like, I mean, he is nine million years old, but you know, that's yeah. just me. <laughs> so I'm gonna go with Optimus Prime. Optimus. Uh, go with Gundam, so it's me. All right. So. I don't think I'll just come with the his trust Ooh, boy, I'm space. Why are you red? Does he red like that in this year? I don't know, but I think it was more like a first thing to get Oh, yeah, he can predict. Sucks! Like I said, technique and speed, but I think we kind of had the idea. Oh, they both got something that's good. How did I compare on size? I thought I would think off of this big day. Oh, he has another sword though. Oh, he's dual blading. What is this, Kirisol? Ah! Uh, I think he died. Did I? I don't know. What? Oh, what was that? 
I think I missed that. They said he had a laser, a blasting laser from his uh, spar. Yeah! Oh, the gun was an impressive machine, and Amro was a skilled pilot, but Optimus's millions of years of battle experience yeah, completely like overshadowed yeah. Amro's 14. Also, we already know that Optimus was over six times I didn't know, faster I forgot that and 9,000 times strength. stronger. I saw that too. Who knew Optimus was so freaking buff? But the Gundam held plenty of its own advantages. With Amuro's super future sense powers, yeah, he can Amuro keep can, up with Optimus' speed. And with the Gundam's firepower, who cares right how much it could lift? Unfortunately, the Gundam's limited ammunition meant this couldn't last. And even then, Optimus could certainly survive a shot from the beam rifle. Remember that refinery explosion Optimus survived? The one you could see from outer space? This blast left an enormous gash on the planet's Cybertron. To measure the power of this explosion, we needed to compare it to the curve of the planet. Uh, now, Cybertron's size is freaking consistent throughout G1 Transformers history, but even when using the alternating sizes between the cartoon and the comics, the blast is far more destructive than the beam rifle in both cases. And Optimus just walked right out of that bitch! And this isn't some <laughs> weird outlier just out of the comics either. In the cartoon, Megatron survived a blast that pushed Cybertron out of orbit, and he's pretty comparable to Optimus. To be fair, the Gundam boasted some impressive durability feats too. Like when Amuro accidentally blew up Azaku's nuclear reactor right in his own face. Hey, give him a break, it was his first time. This explosion created a hole in the space colony which sucked out Amuro's father. Whoops. But on the bright side, he's gonna save some money on Father's Day gifts, right? And with his heightened mind, we deduced the scope of the explosion. It's over 150,000 kilotons of TNT. That's 10,000 times more powerful than the bomb that dropped on Hiroshima, but still nowhere close to the refinery explosion Optimus survived. Also, the Gundam couldn't dodge Optimus' ion blaster forever. It was fast enough to strike targets in orbit from ground level. Whoa. That was its laser speed over 3 million miles per hour. Even when he knew it was coming, Amuro couldn't react quick enough to dodge or block anything that fast. And even then, Optimus' time in the Omni Globe proves he can think way faster than Amuro. And just to blow your mind even more, in order to obliterate Unicron with the Matrix, the energy output must have equaled more than... <laughs> 40 Yoda tons of TNT. Like the Star Wars game! <laughs> and you know what they yeah. say, size matters not, especially when Optimus has defeated opponents as big as Devastator. The Gundam was a powerful mobile suit with some astonishing firepower, but was ultimately outmatched by the Autobot's strength, speed, durability, and experience. I think Optimus though. was That's prime for though. this fight. The winner yeah, is Optimus like, Prime. I didn't think the speed was that much different, but you know. Yeah. Apparently, even Optimus was faster. I really didn't know what it was. I don't know, it's just. What? 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 Oh. Really? Oh, that's pretty cool. I know, live action. Damn, they're stepping up. This is not able to stay long. Really cool. Ah, but yeah, that's that's cool. Yeah, I I knew he had the power and durability. I knew Optimus Prime had that down. Mm -hmm. I probably would have gone with Optimus Prime too, but I was like, just to spice this up more. Yeah, imagine he could have won. Yeah. If all of us, would, all of us would have won. I'm winning on the score anyway, so I, just, I think this might even it out actually. Maybe. I don't know. But that makes it I, more interesting. I, I was losing at first. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. I guess that it makes sense what they say. I'll just probably, even even if you had the speed advantage, I still don't think you would be able to do anything that much to Optimus. What? Because all the little stuff he had. That's it. I should have thought that through. Is that all the little stuff he had? Optimus could literally repair. Yeah. His spark allows him to repair minor or even big damages. Yeah. It's and, so it's like, and he only has limited ammunition. He could keep stabbing Optimus and Optimus, that wouldn't do anything just like I guess so. But uh it's so kind of actually you know, yeah. I mean if you if you guys think it anything different, I'd love to hear it in the comments. Yeah, like, if you actually think like something to hear your feedback. But just remember it's the original Gundam. Other Gundams might be 
yeah, even crazier. Yeah. Yeah. But it's they went off the original one. Yeah, so I don't but know yeah, if there's anything it. you guys know that will make this either more balanced yeah, feel free. or Gundam actually seems like it would win, tell us in the comments. We'd love to hear from you. Yeah. But yeah, with that. Alright, with that all said, if you liked this video, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe if you want to catch more of our videos, and uh, comment down below on any video series or any music video, anything you want to see. Anything! That's it. See ya. See ya.